How could this seemingly normal engineer hide such dark secrets and commit such chilling crimes? And what exactly happened in the quiet town of Malabar that led to the unmasking of this monster? Welcome back to the Crime Diaries. In today's video, we'll be diving deep into the twisted case of John Crutchley, aka the Vampire Rapist. Stay tuned to find out. John Crutchley was not a usual criminal. To most people, he looked like a very important engineer. He had a special permission from the government because of his work for the Navy. He had a good job, seemed to have a happy family, and was known as a smart person in electronics. He looked like a successful professional in America. However, hidden behind this normal appearance was something really strange and dark. Crutchley had a very weird interest in blood, not just being curious. He did awful things. He would take the blood from his victims and keep it in jars to drink later. In his own house, he did really bad things that were so terrible that people called him the Vampire Rapist. In the town of Malabar, people went about their usual routines without knowing the danger nearby. Little did they know, something bad was about to happen. Women started disappearing, and people began to wonder what was going on. But it wasn't until one of his victims managed to escape and tell her story that the really scary truth about Crutchley came out. John Crutchley didn't have an easy life when he was a kid. His family had a lot of problems, and he didn't get much help from his parents. Even though things were tough, he didn't give up. He worked hard and became successful in electronics. His story can encourage others who are going through tough times too. But there were hidden facets to John's personality that began to surface. He developed an interest in various sexual activities that were considered taboo. From pornography to partner swapping, from bondage to group sex, John's desires were unconventional and often extreme. These activities were kept hidden, confined to the shadows of his private life. It was during this time that John met his second wife, Karen. A woman who was more open-minded about their adventurous sex life, Karen seemed to be the perfect match for John. Yet she remained blissfully unaware of the depths of her husband's dark desires. The man she knew as a loving husband and a brilliant engineer had a hidden side, a side that was yet to reveal itself in its full, terrifying form. As John's life continued on its seemingly normal trajectory, the undercurrents of his dark obsessions were growing stronger. The stage was set for a descent into madness that would shock the world. As John Crutchley got older, something really bad started to happen. There were a lot of murders that the police couldn't solve, and this made his regular life seem much darker and scarier. The first victim was Deborah Fitzjohn. A young woman with a promising future, Deborah had been casually dating John for about nine days before she mysteriously disappeared. Her decomposing body was found nine months later near John's trailer. Despite the suspicious circumstances, the police were unable to determine the cause of death or find any concrete evidence against John. Next were Pamela Kimbrough and Carol Ann Molnar. Something really sad happened to both of them, and their lives were ended in a really cruel way. It's not very clear if John was involved, but the similarities are hard to ignore. All three women had something to do with John and all three died in a way that wasn't supposed to happen so soon. As the suspicions grew, John made a significant move. He relocated to Malabar, Florida, leaving behind a trail of unanswered questions. In Florida, he began working for the Harris Corporation, a tech company that did work for the Department of Defense. His role required top secret security clearance, a testament to his professional reputation. But beneath the veneer of respectability, the dark undercurrents of his life continued to swirl. Moving to Florida didn't make people stop being suspicious of John. The fact that Deborah, Pamela, and Carol Ann's murders were still unsolved made things worse for him. People were unsure and scared about him. But something really surprising needed to happen for his terrible secret life to become known to everyone. The turning point in the dark saga of John Crutchley came with the case of Laura Murphy, a 19-year-old woman whose courage would finally expose the monster hiding in plain sight. On a seemingly ordinary day in November 1985, Laura was walking to the store for cigarettes when she was approached by John. Dressed in a suit and appearing harmless, he offered her a ride. Despite her initial hesitation, Laura accepted, unknowingly stepping into a nightmare. Once they arrived at his house, John invited Laura inside. 
Within minutes, the situation took a horrifying turn. John strangled Laura until she passed out. When she woke up, she found herself tied to a kitchen counter, the victim of a deranged sadist. Over the next 22 hours, Laura endured unimaginable torture. John violated her repeatedly, draining her blood using a syringe and surgical tubing, and then drinking it. But despite the horror and the pain, Laura clung to a sliver of hope. In a moment of oversight, John left Laura alone in the house, warning her that his brother would kill her if she tried to escape. But Laura, weak and on the brink of death, saw her chance. She managed to break free and escape to the road, where she was found by a good Samaritan who rushed her to the hospital. The police were called, and an investigation was launched. Armed with a search warrant, they descended upon John Crutchley's house. What they found was a chilling confirmation of Laura's ordeal. Syringes, a camera with erased videos, and graphic images of women in bondage. John got arrested and accused of kidnapping and hurting someone. His hidden bad secret was now known to everyone, and the image of a good engineer was completely broken. The case of Laura Murphy showed what John Crutchley was really like, and he became known as the Vampire Rapist. The evidence against John Crutchley was overwhelming, leading to a court case that would seal his fate. Charged with kidnapping and sexual battery, John was sentenced to 25 years in prison with a mandatory parole of 50 years. It was a sentence that reflected the severity of his crimes and the danger he posed to society. Something that made people very angry happened. John got out of prison early because he behaved well after only 11 years of being there, but he didn't stay free for long. Just three days after getting out, he got arrested again, this time for having marijuana. This broke the rules of his parole, so he had to go back to prison, where he would stay for the rest of his life. Life behind bars did little to reform John. He continued to display disturbing behavior, including piercing his genitals and bragging about his past killings. His actions served as a chilling reminder of the man he was, a man whose dark desires had led him to commit unspeakable crimes. John Crutchley's story came to an end in 2002. He was found dead in his prison cell, the result of autoerotic asphyxia. His death marked the end of a life marked by heinous crimes and dark obsessions. Thinking about John Crutchley's case shows us that bad things can be hidden under a normal life. His story teaches us to be careful and not only trust appearances. His crimes keep affecting people, reminding us how dark people's hearts can be. The people hurt by him and their families will always have the marks of what he did. And that's the horrifying story of John Crutchley, the vampire rapist. His case leaves us with so many unanswered questions. What drove him to commit such evil acts? And how was he able to conceal his true nature for so long? Let us know your thoughts on this haunting case in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more true crime videos. We'll see you in the next one.